right, welcome to another Friday night episode of Keto Rocks Radio with your host, Jim Hobbs. And to my left or right is Brian, Damage Forsyth of Kicks. Hello. And we're here to discuss with you keto carnivore lifestyle and to uh, do a little recap from the concert in Frederick last Friday night. And uh, first of all, I was there, my wife and I was there with some friends. And let me just tell you, it was cold. <laughs> when the when the sun went down, it got cold, and so uh, hats off to to you, Brian, and to and to the rest of the band because I don't know how you guys sounded as good as you did uh, because it was it was it was cold out there. It was a little chilly. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys had a little bit of a heater out there. Did they have heat blowing on you or something to help you guys out? Yeah, they had those big um, whatever they call those things, those big propane things, and they had uh, like these. Um, tubes <laughs> big uh, tubes that went up onto the stage and were, they they blew out air and actually that that helped a lot it took the the edge off a bit on up on stage but the but the downfall is uh you know it really Same. messed with the tuning yeah because yeah. you know there'd be cool cold pockets and then you'd walk up towards the front of the stage and you walk through that uh, that hot air and you know i could hear like i could hit an a chord and walk through that hot air and hear the chord just go out of tune as i'm walking through it <laughs> yeah i know it had to be uh, terrible for you guys but you guys sounded great it was a it was a great crowd for sitting the fact that you guys had very short notice to sell tickets i mean it was a great crowd yeah it just goes to show you people are starving for entertainment <laughs> yeah no it is good and, and to be honest with you um peggy and i was discussing that was probably my favorite venue to see you guys in just for the fact that it was it was just fun to be able to to be able to get your own table your chairs out sit there and, and have food and watch you guys and that that screen they have you guys on the i don't know if it's a 5k or whatever but it's very high definition um screen so you guys were very clear from even very very far away Oh, that's cool. Yeah, well, I heard that they, uh, when they first opened that, that, that venue, it was just for movies. And they, they got that LED screen just so they could show movies during the day. They didn't have to wait till nighttime. So, you know, that, that thing works you no know, matter if the sun's out or not. So then they, you know, uh, I think their, their ultimate plan was to do this with the concerts. And so they transitioned into that. Well, it made a lot of sense. And I love the fact how how it went i enjoyed it thoroughly it had no problems getting in no problems getting out and uh hopefully you know we'd love to see you guys play there again this time in warmer temperatures yeah. where a heater is not needed but uh it was a great show and i it was it was i think you're right people are starving to have live music again there's so something about live music i know it's i know for steven it's hard to interact with people if they're in their car or out of their car it's a little bit a different vibe than normally it is yeah and you know we that's the first time we've done one of those so we didn't know what to expect i mean i had a feeling i've seen pictures of those concerts so i knew that people aren't in their cars the whole time you know they're usually on the outsides so when we were putting the set list together steve was like no nah, you know let's let's skip all the sing-along parts you know we'll just <laughs> blast through the song and and i said well you know most of the people will probably be on the outside of their cars. They'll still be able to respond, but he didn't, you know, he didn't know. So, you know, we sort of just left all that stuff out, but I think next time we'll be a little bit more, uh, well, we'll know, we'll know what to expect. Right, no, no, you, you didn't know what to expect. And, you know, I, I, and, and heck, even, I didn't even know, I think from a fan standpoint, we didn't even know what to expect, but uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, if you've never done it before, how, you know, how would you know? <laughs> no, yeah. no, I think I think it was I think it was a learning uh, event for both sides, as the band and for the fans. But it was I think I think most of the people I spoke to really really liked the venue and, and would love to see you guys play in that kind of venue again. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll have us back. I mean, we 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 even said it before we left. It says, "Yeah, we should do this again." <laughs> so awesome, awesome. Well, I know next week we're uh, hopefully have your uh, your sidekick Mark on with us to to kind of talk about your guys' new re-release of the remix of Midnight Dynamite, which came out 35 years ago. It's hard to believe, even as I'm saying that, 35 years ago. Yeah, that was a while. Yeah. So yeah, anyway. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear it. I mean, I've, we've been doing interviews 
behind this this re-release and uh i haven't even heard it so people keep asking me questions and i'm like i don't know <laughs> now who's who's actually heard it then i mean i'm not sure i know bo remixed it bo hill has remixed it for you who's been working with bo is that mark yeah yeah so mark's had access to it and i think steve got to hear a couple things but i haven't heard any anything yet so it's going to be all new to me <laughs> all right there you go well, we'll have hopefully have Mark on next week and you guys can get a chance to uh, get a, a little bit more of a, a feel of, of the new release and be able to know how to go about ordering it in advance or purchasing or when it's going to be out to purchase. Do you know if it's going, it's going out on Amazon or do you know how it's being released? Well, it is going to be on our website and I think it, Amazon is the other, other way you can get it. Awesome. It'll look fun. All right, let's talk about uh, some keto carnivore projects. What you been working on, Brian, this week? Well, I did a, um, a cheesecake. It's my second cheesecake. Um, the first one I didn't, I didn't film because, you know, I was figuring it out. So this time I filmed it. So I'm going to be putting that up at some point here shortly. I, I've already got it up on, on, uh, on YouTube, but I haven't. I haven't filled in all the, the info, all the description stuff and the links. And so I got to get all that done and then, then upload it. But, uh, yeah, this one, this one turned out really good. I, I tweaked, um, I t tweaked the crust ingredients this time. And I tweaked the sweeteners, which, uh, that, that made a huge difference with the sweeteners. The so last you time, so did you add more, did you add, did you use more than sir? So is it, I mean, swerve or what did you use? What sweeteners did you use? No, I used, um, I used, uh, it's called pure monk fruit extract and it's a okay. powder and it, cause usually if you get monk fruit sweetener, it'll be mixed with something else and it'll only be like 10% monk's monk fruit. But this is pure monk fruit, which is like super sweet. So I used, um, I'm trying to remember what I used in, in the actual cake part. I used uh, tea stevia, or you just oh. it's all, all you use with monk monk fruit. No, I used the monk fruit powder, a uh, teaspoon of that, but then I used a tablespoon of the. Um, I think it was a teaspoon. I, I have to watch the video. <laughs> I can't remember, <laughs> but uh, I used a tablespoon of Swerve granu granulated uh, sugar substitute, and this is in the cream cheese part. So it was a combination of those two. And then for the uh, crust, I used Swerve brown sugar substitute. Uh, and then for the uh, whipped cream topping, I used like an eighth of a teaspoon of the, um, the monk fruit powder in that. No, no. And, yeah, so it wasn't like overdone. I, I don't know what I did. I don't know what the ratio was on my last one, but there was this weird bitter aftertaste to it that I think it was the monk fruit. And this but, time I used just the right amount. So it didn't it, that bitterness didn't, didn't come through. But did and you it, write down the recipe this time? Did you write it down anywhere? Uh, I tried to, <laughs> let me hang on. I got this, uh, my, my little notepad here on my, I can tell you real fast. Uh, the filling, it was a half, oh, it was a half a teaspoon in, in the cream cheese filling, half a teaspoon of the monk fruit extract, and a tablespoon of swerve granul granulated sugar substitute. And then, let's see, crust, it was just the, uh, it was the brown sugar, swerve brown sugar. And that I didn't measure. I just dumped that in. So, <laughs> and then the whipped cream topping, I used an eighth, yeah, an eighth of a teaspoon of the monk fruit. So I did, you know, I took some, a, a few measurements and I, I, I'm going to post them when I, when I uh, upload the video, I'll, I'll put, put them down in the little show notes. I'll, I'll have the, at least the ingredient list. I, I don't have, I haven't written out the recipe. I, I figured people can just watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll include the link. Hopefully you have your video done and I'll just, we'll include the link in our show notes so people can go check out that video. Um, yeah, it turned, it turned out great though. It's, I mean, if you, I, I don't, it's not super sweet. I know if you buy a cheesecake from the store or something like Sara Lee or something, it's going to be like super sweet, 
this is uh it's just a hint of sweetness just enough to satisfy that's so more like a new york cheesecake a new york a good new york cheesecake is like it's got that it's like dry that's the only way i know to describe it it's like a dry sweetness well yeah the new york is more of like a cake really it's not it's not like the cream cheese it's it's more of a cake consistency to it like like well somewhere in between right but, but this is still this is still like a cream cheese cheesy kind of consistency to it creamy well i know it looked good i know you showed it to me earlier it looked it looked del delicious so people go check out his video and uh and go yeah. make it because it's, it's a per it's a perfect dessert to make with thanksgiving coming up uh, next week actually that's true but it's it's got it's got cream cheese it's got sour cream and it has um heavy cream and an egg that's that's what's in the um filling so it's it's nice and dense <laughs> <laughs> it's not the uh not the 20 pound 30 pound uh cake you made before or, or i mean ages ago you were talking about earlier Oh, you're talking about that carrot cake. Yeah, yeah that's a that's... 20 pound cake. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what else, what else you've been working on? I know you got a new griddle. So did I. So how, what, uh, what have you been cooking on the griddle? Well, I've used it for a few things. I, I, I tried, um, I was having a problem with my Traeger with, uh, cause I, I'll smoke the uh, steak on there to get it, the internal temperature up to like say 120 or so. And then, then I would drop it down onto the, the bottom grill and crank the, the grill up to 500 to, to sear it. But the problem is, you know, all the grease in there would catch on fire when it got up to about 500 degrees. So, so um, I got that griddle. And um, so now I just, I put the, the steak on the top shelf and smoke it up to temperature. I pull it off and I have that griddle thing cranked up and I just throw some butter on there and then throw the steak on and just sear the outside of it. Oh, it works so nicely. I mean, it doesn't have the grill marks, but it, it's that, that crusty sear. Um, the only thing is I, I was, when was it yesterday? I, I, I used my uh, Traeger. Did I, I did a steak on there. Yeah, I think I grilled the steak yesterday, but I, it was too cold to pull the, um, the griddle out because there was this cold wind blowing. Yeah, we had that coming through here so, in Virginia too. Um, yeah, so I just stuck to the Traeger since it's got a lid. <laughs> I need to get a lid for that for that uh, that um, griddle. Mine, I bought one. I happened to go through Lowe's, and I guess it was a Black Friday special because it was like one hundred and twenty nine dollars, and then they had it on they had it on sale for seventy one dollars, and so I was like, wow, yeah. So I I, I picked it up, and. Uh, and since then, I've just, I mean, literally, I've fallen in love with it. I went out today, bought more attachments. I bought the hose so I can stop using the little small propane tanks and I can hook it to my big one. Yeah, I ordered a hose for mine. Because uh, it, it, I mean, I, it didn't even last me an hour and a half the other day cooking on the small one. And so I did not want to be stuck out there uh, not having propane like my... Uh, yeah thanksgiving turkey smoking fiasco from years ago <laughs> so uh so i got the so i got the i got the attachment the the weighted to weight the uh to, to flatten your bacon to, to cook your bacon down i got that i bought another one today that actually you just throw a raw hamburger on it and then you just press it down and it presses makes a a, a hamburger mm -hmm. and then i bought a uh I bought a, a cover so I can steam vegetables and 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 the, the, and the like the at a at a Chinese uh, uh, Mongolian barbecue grill. So yeah, and then I bought the cover for it because it's been sitting outside on this table outside. I was like, oh man, if it rains, that's probably not good for it. So I went out and bought a cover for it today. So I am totally totally set now. But yeah, I did the same thing you did. I I think I was telling you about earlier. I smoked some. Uh, I smoked some New York strips on the Traeger. Then I put them in the bags and I sous vide them for about three or four hours at uh, one thirty. And then I threw them on the grill with butter, seared them for about one minute on each side. And uh, man, they were delicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the griddle's really cool because now I can. Uh, I mean, 
where my Traeger is, it's, it's out back, but that's, but I have to go downstairs and out through the garage. So like, uh, in the past, you know, I'd be up here with the bacon and the eggs or the, at least the bacon. And I'd be running back and forth from the kitchen down to the, to the Traeger, uh, with the steak. So it made it hard. I'd have to leave the bacon sitting here cooking and run down there and then come running back up. And, but now I can, I have the griddle sitting on the little table right there by the grill. So I can just cook the eggs and the bacon and everything right there. And, and you know, everything's there. I don't have to worry about it. No, I, it, I'm, I'm in love with it. And the fact that I think I've told you this, I don't know if I did this on air or not, but Slinky, our basset hound, we actually make his own food. So we usually do uh, free range eggs and hamburger, and he loves it to be seasoned with salt and pepper. I mean, he's a big salt and pepper uh, fan. But, uh, <laughs> but now cook it, cook it on that big old griddle. You know, I throw all of it on there, just mix and mix it all together, and, and without having to be inside the kitchen. I mean, because as much as we put into a, a black iron skillet pan, it can't hold with a 22 inch griddle can. Right. And then I bring out a big old aluminum tray. And then after I get it all cooked, I, I put it in there and then I package it up in uh, 12 ounce. Um, each portion is 12 ounces and I bag it all up and let it cool down, put in the refrigerator. And he absolutely loves it. As a matter of fact, he's sitting right here beside me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That was the thing with me. It's like, uh, you know, I was, I was cooking some, the burgers on the Traeger, but my favorite way to cook a burger is on, you know, a flat surface, like either a cast iron, because you, that's where you, you can use the burger press on those. Right. And, uh, but the cast iron didn't work well on the, on the grill. Like I couldn't get the cast iron hot enough. So now that I got that griddle, you know, I do have a burger press. I can do it like the, the smash burger method. Yes, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> where you put the paper over it and you hold it like for a minute and then and you wait till it's, uh, it looks like when a pancake's ready to be flipped, the, the blood's coming up through it. Right. And then you take the spatula and scrape off that crust that's on the bottom and you flip it over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I can cook a burger the right way. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm just loving it because, man, love it. I love taking the butter and then cooking the onions and peppers. And then I was, I was thinking I was telling you earlier, I took the New York strip and we have a meat slicer. So I sliced the New York strip very, very thin. And then I, Cook that with the green peppers and onions on the griddle and mm -hmm. added some uh, cheese, some garlic, some salt and pepper, and just made a bowl, just made a bowl of, of that combination. And I'm telling you, there's something about just the, the seasoning, the flavor you get from being on that griddle. It's, it's delicious. So yeah. I've now gone from, uh, Peggy's like, man, you're, you've gone from your, your smoker. And now you're just using the griddle all the time. But right now, I, I have to be honest, I'm in love with the griddle. So, and talking about in love, what's some of the favorite dishes? What are you doing for Thanksgiving, Brian? What do you, what do you normally do on Thanksgiving? What I normally do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, do you get together with family or do you, do you, do you, do you cook up just even if it's yourself? Do you cook a lot of food, you have friends over, family? What do you do on Thanksgiving? Well, normally we're, uh, you know, every year we've done a show, done that show up in Harrisburg. So I'm usually up in Maryland. Uh, this year that show got canceled. But I think I'm, I'm still going up there because I already have my flights booked. So I'm just going to go up and hang out with my family, my sister, and my now what's, mom. What's some of your traditional uh, dishes you guys have? Is it the traditional turkey ham? What do you guys normally have? Well, they do. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. You can tell me what they do, the stuffing, the dressing, all that good stuff. Well, before, before, um, before I went carnivore, I used to eat salmon. I would have salmon for thanksgiving but now um i'm not sure what i'm gonna have some kind of steak either ribeye or a, or a tomahawk i'm not sure <laughs> ah, actually uh food lines running a great special in our area you spend 35 dollars with them you get a turkey i mean i mean a big old turkey 29 cents a pound so i've bought four turkeys i mean probably 12 pound turkeys it cost me three dollars a piece, so I have four turkeys, which we love to brine them, and uh, and then take all the bones and make uh, uh, turkey broth, turkey soup. Uh, I mean, we use every part of the turkey, so those four turkeys will last us for for six months, just with what we'll get from them. 
Yeah, well, I don't know what they're going to have. I'm assuming that last year they had turkey. They bought a small turkey, but my sister doesn't eat turkey, so um, it's just her daughter and, and her husband. And I guess my mother would eat, would eat turkey, but uh, yeah, I don't really care for turkey myself. Yeah, I, I was never a big fan, except I do like, we do, do we do a dry brine? A dry brine on the turkey, a rub, and uh, that really does keep it juicy. We've done it every way. We've done a smoked turkey. We've done a deep fry turkey. Uh, that deep that. fry is just that's a. I mean, it's well, it's it's really good. It's just a lot of work that goes into it, and and man, to have that much uh, oil bubbling up, it's not. It's a little bit dangerous. Have you? Yeah, you can go to YouTube and watch the 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 frying turkey fail videos have you seen those <laughs> oh, i've seen it the, yeah there well we almost had one of those a couple of years ago and, and so they're there i'm saying it's 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 a dangerous you're 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 risking your life to to have a, a fried turkey yeah uh, there, there's 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 plenty of videos out there to tell you that you should probably be doing it <laughs> so but uh what other projects you got on the works so you, you hell, hey, hey, can we? I don't know if we can talk about this. If you even want to talk about it, I should have asked you before we did the show. But uh, how's your book coming along? Oh, it's it's coming slowly but surely. Uh, yeah, it, it seems like every time I go there, I get on like a, I I fall into some like story and and expand on it, and I end up talking about like say one one little section each time. So, uh, so this guy's helped me put it together and putting the pieces where they where they're supposed to go along the storyline. But um, yeah, I'm not sure how um, or when when this is even going to be done. I, I haven't um, looked into a book publisher or any of that junk yet. So that's all. The, the business part of it's still got to be taken care of. Gotcha. But is this like you know something to be done in six months, a year, or? Ooh, I don't know. It, it might be done. <laughs> I mean, I may have it all out of me <laughs> by uh, by the end of the year. It's not going to be done by then, though. I don't think. Well, that's a start. The hardest part is is getting out of it. I mean, truthfully, I had a friend of mine just did his book, and he just you know during the uh, stay at home. Uh, orders in Pennsylvania. He just he finally just said, you know, this is the time for me to do it, and just dedicated, you know, a number of hours each day to to put it together. So he's finally done it. It's out for uh, the manuscript for publishing, and I think his comes out uh, any day now. Wow, cool. So Adam, a shout out to you, buddy. <laughs> so anyway, so so you're going to spend spend Thanksgiving with the family, and then uh, cool, cool. What's uh? What's do you have any 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 famous or not famous? Do you have any uh, funny Thanksgiving stories? Well, I got one from my, from my childhood. All right. <laughs> it was uh, well, it was a kind of a disaster. I don't know if this, but you know, I was thinking about this story because I didn't put this in the book or anything, but it caused me to think of all these memories. Um, it was Thanksgiving weekend, like we were getting off of school. It was the last day of school before the, the holiday. Or maybe it was the day before. I forget how school worked back then. <laughs> um, but yeah, we had like a half a day of school right before Thanksgiving. And uh, I got off early and, and I was going to, um, this was in Frederick, and I was going to walk over to Hood College where my dad uh, taught at the time. And I was going to meet him after school and then ride home with him. So um, I get off school and I and I walk. And it's not, you know, it's halfway across town, but Frederick's not that big. So I, I get there and my father's not there. He's already gone. <laughs> I guess he forgot I was coming. And I'm like, oh, and this is before cell phones or anything, you know? Oh, yeah. So I'm like, oh, now what do I do? So I walked um, from there. Where did I? I went to... So the shopping center downtown where that Mexican restaurant is in Frederick. Uh, and there was a payphone there. There was a drugstore and a payphone. And I call home and I, you know, I, I get my mom on the phone and I go, oh, I'm supposed to be dad here at the, at the college and he's not here. 
and she didn't know where he was and she I don't know what happened like she was busy cooking and so I just started walking and and we lived way out of town like 10 miles out or so wow I mean way out there and and uh so I just started walking and um and at some point a friend of mine came by on a bicycle and goes hey you you need a ride <laughs> so I jumped on the back of his bicycle but he lived he didn't live like he lived like uh, in the general direction, but not quite like I would have walked up a different way to get home. So I had to go a different way to, to go on his bicycle. Right. And uh, so he only took me so far and then dropped me off again. So then I'm walking again. And I remember I, I got to my friend's house down the road from us. I was pretty close to home and I, I decided to, I think maybe I saw my friend out in the yard and I asked him if I could use his phone. So I, just to let my, my mother know that I was almost there. I was, I was, cause she didn't know what I was going to do, I guess, when I talked to her. So I finally, I, I call her and I say, okay, I'm right down the road. I'll be there in like 10 minutes. And my dog was actually, we used to let our dogs run loose. My dog met me down the road. So we went, she, my dog walked on up with me and went, went, I went up the lane. We had like a, a quarter mile lane. So I'm going up the lane with my dog and it's getting dark. And, uh, and also my dog runs into the bushes and I hear this like commotion in the bushes and it was getting too dark where I, I couldn't really see what was going on. And then I felt something run across my feet and it was a skunk. Oh my God. My dog had gone in after this skunk and it came running out, ran right across my feet, sprayed me, sprayed my dog. <laughs> <laughs> and my dog was running around, like dragging his foot in the dirt, trying to get the smell out. So here I am, I'm showing up for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> But actually, I'm not sure if that night was, was the actual Thanksgiving dinner, but it was like, I'm showing up for dinner. Like, I'm walking in late. It's dark, and, it, and, and I'm, I smell like a skunk. So that, that was my big uh, Thanksgiving surprise. <laughs> did, you, did, you, uh, did you have to take your dog and give him a tomato, a tomato ba bath with the tomatoes or whatever to get the smell off of them? Nah, nah. I, don't, I think that's just a myth anyway. We just let leave him outside and let him air out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! You know, you, you talk those stories and and I it starts taking me back because you know people who who in this day and age with cell phones, but back then there were no cell phones. I remember when pagers came out, but but in school you just you never had you had no way to get a hold of anybody. You talk about freedom. There was a lot of freedom in not having some way for someone to connect or to call you. But, um, <laughs> but you know, it's also, I can remember from my mom, my mom always worried about make sure I was okay and all that. So I always would call her from a friend's house or from, from my work to let her know I made it okay. But you're right. I mean, there was no way to get a hold of like, you know, people are going probably listening to your story going, well, why did his mom just call his dad? Well, it's because we had no cell phones. There were no phones to get a hold of anybody. Right. Yeah, you had to find a pay phone. <laughs> so, so did your did your dad make it home? Did he did he did he yeah. apologize for not picking you up or waiting for you? He, yeah, he completely forgot. He just forgot. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, those 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 are stories. Well, you need to you need to include that one in your uh, in your book as well. Yeah, I can't remember if I if I actually told that one or not. I, I I've there's so many stories along the way. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. I think, uh, I think being able to leave a legacy for other people to read, especially in your own family, just to, to hear the stories and, you know, especially coming from your perspective of how you saw things uh, would be interesting. Yeah. So is the book going to talk about your whole life? It's going to be an autobiographical and then like your music career and what, you know, yeah. You know, Cool. Yeah, that was the thing when I started messing around with this thing with, with this guy. I, I was trying to decide should it be more focused on my music career, but then there's so many other things. So it's basically my life. I I, I do talk about you know I go into some detail about the the band and all that junk, but you know there's the whole my whole um, recovery, my drug issues and the recovery and 
in that whole part of my life too, which is really cool. So just well, I hope you to told, I hope you told the good stories and, and, and I mean, I'm not making light of it. I just know you got some great stories in coming through that uh, and, and, and going through that. I know, I know the one that I've heard, the one about the, the, the ankle bracelet that the, the drug dealer where you had to, the guy with the ankle bracelet. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. There's some good ones. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't dug into that one yet. I, I skimmed around the edges a little, uh, <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't like gone through that part of the history yet and, and dug in. But that's a good one. Well, uh, just make just make sure you change the names to protect the innocent and the guilty. Well, luckily, I, I don't remember that guy's name, but I remember what he looks like, though. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Anyway, well, listen. Uh, this will be the show that I think airs before uh, Thanksgiving. So just want to wish everybody out there. Thanks for, uh, for, for, for watching us and, and spending your Friday evening with us and just wish you and your family a very happy and safe Thanksgiving and, and, and enjoy your keto carnivore dishes. There's plenty to be had. Yeah. Um, Nisha put up that, uh, it was like a cornbread st uh, stuffing or whatever, which isn't, it's not, not really corn, but I didn't look at the recipe, but did you see that? No, I did not see that. No. Dr. Barry's wife. Yeah. She had some kind of a recipe, but yeah. So I know we will be, uh, I don't, I know everything's, every state's changed. I'm hearing so much stuff, even in Virginia that we're supposed to be limiting our numbers of, yeah. of, of gathering. So luckily well, for us, go ahead. We were going to say, Brian. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I was, I've been going back and forth on that too. Should I really go? Should I go? Should I not go? But, um, you know, I already had my flights and, um, you know, I just, I flew last week and, you know, the flight was pretty empty. I, I don't know. I can't see it being, even though it is a holiday, maybe it'll be a little bit more full, but, um, I'm pretty careful when I travel. I remember flying, you know, talking about flying. I remember I was on the West coast. I was in San Diego. I was flying out on a Wednesday before Thanksgiving, which is supposedly the busiest travel day. Right. And it was a zoo. I had to fly into LA. I remember LA was just a zoo. LAX was just a zoo. They had news crews out there doing the, the coverage of how busy it is. And and I, I just remember how cramped. I remember you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm, I was, I'm six foot two. And back then I wasn't as slim as I am now. And I remember I had a middle, middle seat and both people on both sides of me were like bigger than I was. <laughs> so I was just like in there in the seat, so miserable. And I was just like, Oh my gosh. And then I had a direct flight, thank goodness. But you know, it's still, you know, it's still a long flight, four and a half hours just squished in there. But uh, I'll never forget how, how crowded it was. But I also just remember, I couldn't wait to get home. I just couldn't wait to get home. Couldn't wait to get home. Yeah, I remember coming back. This is way back in the late 80s, early 90s, coming back from Japan, Oh. which is a long flight. And, and we had a stopover. I think it was either San Francisco. Was it San Francisco or Seattle? I forget. One of the two. But it was so foggy, we couldn't land, so they had to circle around. And then they got to the point where they were getting low on fuel, so they had to land. <laughs> and, like, you couldn't see a thing. It was so foggy. And uh, so we finally get there, and then we change planes. And I was so worn out from that first flight, you know, having to come across the ocean and then circle around for an hour and a half before we could land. Um, and we get on the next flight from... It may have been San Francisco to to uh, Baltimore, and I get stuck in a middle seat. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to sleep so bad, but I had like these two big guys on either side of me, yeah. and like, just sitting there. And my head the whole way back was just going mm -hmm. like my head, head would. I'd fall asleep and then bounce back up. <laughs> oh, it was like torture the whole way. Yeah, that just that just jogged another memory. I remember flying out for business. We were supposed to fly into San Diego for whatever reason. I don't know it was fog or something, but our pilot says, "Man, we're being redirected. We can't land in San Diego. We're going to have to land in LAX." And 
and it was already I was already taking like a red eye. I mean, I was getting out there, I was landing at like midnight. I had a meeting the next morning, like at six a.m. So mm-hmm. I'm already just exhausted. And I remember, you know, the airline says, "Okay, what we're going to do is we landed in LAX and we've rented we rented you a van and we're going to drive you." So they got everybody that was heading just they they drove us in vans from LA from Los Angeles to San Diego. And I remember and then so now, you know, the person I was I was supposed to be able to go uh, that they had to schedule a the taxi service, but now it's past the airport's closed. Oh. So I'm like, how in the heck am I gonna get to my uh my hotel? And luckily, this lady that was beside me in the van, she says, hey, she goes, I, I, I got to rent a car. So she goes, well, I'll, I'll drop you off at your hotel. And I was like, oh, thank you. And I remember I got up, dropped off the hotel. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. By the time uh, 3.30 in the morning, I get there. By the time I got to my room, you know, I just got about an hour sleep. And the next morning, there I was ready to go to work. <laughs> just a terrible, terrible, terrible night. Anyway. Brian, I'll let you close us out as usual. What, what's on your heart to share? Go ahead and, and close us out. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. I'm just going to eat more meat this week and um, more meat next week. <laughs> so if you got some meat, eat your meat. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thanks. Have a, happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you guys next Friday. Take care, everybody. All right.